Welcome to the Meteor Tutorial Part 1 walkthrough. Before we get started, there are a couple things you need to know. You need to be fairly familiar with HTML and JavaScript. For this walkthrough, you actually don't need to know any CSS. Uh, they create all the CSS for you, but I do highly recommend being proficient with CSS if you do plan on using Meteor in the future. The other thing that you need to know is ES6. ES6 is a version of JavaScript that Meteor uses and I will be creating another video explaining the basics of ES6 to get you up and running. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get Meteor installed. So the first thing you want to do, go to Meteor.com and click on the Install Now button. Uh, if you're on a Mac or Linux, all you have to do is copy and paste this line into your terminal. I've already done it, so I'm not going to show it here. Uh, it also takes a second and I don't want to make you wait. The other way to do it is if you're on Windows, you can download this installer and it'll sort of just walk you through the installation. It's very easy. So let's head back to the home page and let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So you'll see there are actually three versions of the tutorial, uh, of the to do app tutorial here. There's the Blaze version, the Angular version, and the React version. We're going to just go ahead and get started with the Blaze version because it requires the least amount of knowledge up front. But in later videos, I will get into the React version and maybe the Angular version if I have time. So let's go ahead and start the Blaze version. So the first thing you want to do is get your terminal open and navigate to the folder that you want to create your project in. And then run Meteor Create and then the name of the app that you want to create. In this case, it is going to be called Simple To Do's. And it shouldn't take too long maybe 10 or 15 seconds uh, and it will create a full Meteor app for you. Right here it shows the list of files that it actually creates for you and I'll just kind of walk through what they are really quick. Uh, everything in this client folder, so these first three files only run on the client, so this main JS file only runs on the server. Um, obviously you're, you don't have a CSS or an HTML file on the server. Um, and then you have this package.json file. This file here is a way of determining which versions of which packages your program requires. The .meteor folder is very similar to the node modules folder if you're familiar with NPM. Uh, that's where all of your Meteor packages are installed and other Meteor internals will live in there. And then finally the git ignore uh, file is to tell git which files to ignore. Pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and, and follow the instructions they have here. We're going to cd change directory into our simple to do's folder. And then we're going to run meteor npm install. And what this is going to do is take all the packages from our package.json and install the versions specified in that file. Uh, finally, we're going to go ahead and run meteor. That's the only command you have to run in order to get the meteor application server running. So once we hit that, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to start our server, it's going to start our Mongo database server as well, and it's going to allow us to view our site or our app on localhost 3000. And we can see here we have this simple crappy little web page. Uh, you can click this button and it'll update this number. Um, so I mentioned I wasn't going to talk about ES6. ES15 is 2015 is the official name for it, so don't get confused. Um, and actually, there are only three aspects of ES2015 that we need to know for this tutorial. So I'm just going to go over them really quick. So the first one is arrow functions. This is actually just shorthand for function notation. So if you go to babbeljs.io and you go to try it out, you can see what the ES6 turns into in normal JavaScript. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So this function here is functionally equivalent to this. So you can have a function where you return something. You would pass something in like that. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. The other two things you need to know are uh, shorthand for methods. This actually should be pretty familiar to you if you're familiar with other programming languages. But basically, you can write inside of Meteor, you can write something like this, render, boom, which is going to come out to being the same as a function. 
And the last thing is const and let instead of var. Uh, those are ways of creating variables. So normally in JavaScript you would say var x equals 2 and that would create a variable for you that's equal to 2. But in ES6 that's bad. We don't use var anymore. We use let. But if you can use const. And the difference is with const it's a constant. So if you set x to 2 you can't change it later on. But if you use let you can change it later on. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next page. The first couple things you want to do is you want to get rid of the starter HTML code. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another tab in my terminal. And then I'm going to open up Sublime. This is my editor of choice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and arrange some things a little differently here. I'm going to go ahead and go to this client slash main HTML file. And I'm going to delete everything there. Then what I'm going to do is create an imports folder. So you can do this through your text editor or you can do it through your command line. So I went ahead and made a directory called imports. You can see it up here. Inside of imports there's going to be another directory called UI. So I'm going to say ah, so I'm going to say make directory imports slash UI. And then inside of UI there's going to be a body.html. So now I'm going to say touch. This is a command to create a file. Imports slash UI slash body.html. And I'm going to go ahead and open up that file. So I can see here that it exists now. Don't forget to save your other file. And I'm going to just copy and paste what they have in here. Uh, now if you're just learning this, I would actually recommend typing this all out. I know it sounds tedious, but it's a really good way to map this information into your memory. Um, the repetition is really good to learn things. So the other thing I'm going to do, so for now I'm just going to paste it in there just for the sake of brevity. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and create a body.js file. So you, in Meteor, most of the time when you have an HTML file, you're going to have a equivalent JS file to go with that file. So basically this is going to be the presentation layer for whatever logic is in this body.js file. So in this body.js file, I'm going to go ahead and copy their code that they put there and explain a little bit about what's happening here. So the first thing you'll notice, this is actually another ES6 thing. They didn't mention this before, but I guess I'll, I have to tell you about it now. Uh, the import statement. So if you've messed around with any other languages, you'll know that in most languages you have to import functions or, or other things that you want to use from other files or from other libraries. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're importing this template helper from the Meteor templating package. And don't worry too much about the details of that just yet, but basically what it allows us to do is it allows us to to take the body tag here and apply logic to it. So in Meteor we have this concept of templates. You can see this one here is a template and we actually use this HTML tag template which doesn't exist in regular HTML. You may not have seen this before. Um, but basically when we say template.body we're actually able to use this body in the same way that we would use this template here. So this template is called task. So even though this has body tags and not template name equals body, we can still use the body helper on it. And what we're doing inside of there is we're creating an array of objects. And this array of objects has the name tasks. In our body here, we had this each tasks. This is like a for each statement. So we're saying for each of these tasks, then this caret here actually means use the template. So it means use the template named task, which is this template here. And that template actually will tell us which attributes of that task we want to print out. So you can see the text here is this text here. So think of each of these objects corresponding to one of these templates. Now the other thing you have to do, and you can't forget this otherwise it won't work, you actually have to go to your client slash main.js and you have to delete everything that's there first of all and then put this import statement there. 
And what's happening here is we're importing the file that we just created, the body.js. And you may notice that in the body.js itself, we're importing its template file, the body.html. So again, like I said before, the body.html is like the view layer for this logic here. And so if we go to our browser, we can now see that we have a to-do list with some tasks listed here. And you can actually create more tasks. And as I save, so as you make changes, one of the nice things about Meteor is that it will automatically reload your localhost for you. So I can change like some of the te text in here and change things in here. So like I didn't have to refresh the page there. It just updated for me there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, and like you don't, you can go ahead and read through all this if you want. Um, it will give you a, a different explanation of the things that I'm explaining, but I'm assuming that the reason you're watching this video is so that you don't have to read all this or because the way they wrote it is kind of confusing. So what I'm gonna do next is copy all this CSS and then put it in client slash main.css save it and then I'm going to check out my to-do list and look at that it looks completely different now anyway let's go let's let's keep going here okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is storing tasks in a collection so right now what we're doing is we just have these tasks hard-coded here that's not really all that useful uh, in a real app because in a real app you want all your data to come from a database so what I'm going to do is create this imports slash API folder. So we already have the imports folder, so we need to create a, a new folder called API. And in that folder, we need to create a new file called tasks.js. And in that tasks.js, type in all this stuff. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're importing Mongo. So I mentioned before we have a database and that it's called MongoDB. Well, what we're doing is we're actually importing the JavaScript that lets us work with our database. So we are creating a constant called tasks. So remember this keyword const is like a var. But instead of, instead of being able to change tasks later on, it's a constant. And what that's doing is it's creating a new Mongo collection called tasks. So this is something that tripped me up when I first started using Meteor, and it's not very, it's not explained very well in their tutorial. But this lower lowercase tasks is how the media, how the Mongo database internally refers to that collection. So if you're in your Mongo console, so if I open this up, you can actually run your Mongo console. Uh, let's see, by running Meteor Mongo, and if you're actually in that console and you want to access the tasks, you would actually have to say db.tasks. And then you would say like find one. There's nothing in there right now because we haven't created any tasks. But the other thing is in your JavaScript, when you're referring to your tasks, you're going to say capital T tasks.find one. And that will give you a task. So the difference that I'm trying to point out here is that this is capital, this is lowercase they are actually existing in two different places. So once you import this tasks, once you import the tasks from your database into your JavaScript, you can now refer, refer to it with the capital T tasks variable here. And basically what we're doing is we're exporting this so that in other files we can import the API slash tasks JS file. And when we import that file, just like we did up here, we'll be able to use tasks. 